work and understand that at a deeper level. All right, today is lesson number 17 in the Course of Miracles. So this is our 17th lesson i'm just uh not gonna not gonna spend time on the first uh probably half of them because it just that's a lot of them right however when we got up to uh number 15 and 16 i think i want to slow down just a a hair so number 15 was this my thoughts are images that i have made and uh, that was kind of the the shift from 14 which was uh god did not create a meaningless world so we talked about meaning uh through like 12 13 and 14 now we're talking about our thoughts Mm -hmm and how our thoughts uh, impact who we are. And so lesson 15 was my thoughts are images that I've made. Lesson 16, which was yesterday's, was saying that I have no neutral thoughts. No neutral thoughts. And the exercise then was to work with that uh, through, uh, through the course of the day yesterday. And I'm just kind of curious, did you have a chance to work with that as you did the exercise itself? And if so, uh, what did you experience? And so I'm just going to going to open the floor back up and just see if anyone had a chance to do anything with that. So let me ask this question. So again, I I was sensing that we're probably getting a little uh, bogged down in some of this as we're trying to understand what this is really about. And I mentioned yesterday near the end of the call that it's not necessarily about understanding anything. It's really about just being in this. And so I, I do have a couple of questions on, uh, on lesson 16, which was that lesson that I have no neutral thoughts. And behind it, you know, we said that you can have no neutral thoughts because there's no such thing. Your thoughts are, are from, we're, we're putting them through a filter that always ties back into something from our past. And so that's really where we're asking to be from those. So the question I was going to ask was this, you know, on a believability scale, right, where zero is I cannot believe this at all and 10 being, this is absolutely true for me. So this is just the self-reflection. Please rate this statement. Uh, My thoughts become my experiences. So on a scale of zero to 10, where zero is I don't believe that at all, 10 is yes, that's absolutely true. My thoughts become my experiences. How would you rate yourself there as far as your belief or believability about that statement? And then uh, the second question is this one, again, on a scale of zero to 10, my experiences become my thoughts. So how would you rate that one on a believability scale? So, you know, and again, this was self-reflection. If you know one wants to ask a question about it, but here's what I want to share with you. For most people, the answer to those statements would not be a 10 or a zero, right? We probably fell somewhere in between. It would be somewhere, uh, most people do not feel they are totally powerless or in total control of your world. And if you think about it, my thoughts become my experiences. If I gave that a 10, then it, I would believe that everything that I can think of is exactly how the, it'll play out. And the flip side is my experiences become my thoughts. That's saying that, you know, based on what the world does to me, that's how I, my thinking is, is flavored, if you will, or filtered. So uh, how much control do you believe you have in changing your world is the question. And I just gonna t- toss it out there for you to think about today um, as, as we go into lesson 17, because 17 ties in with 16. And then the last question is this, how much control do you believe you have in changing your perception about how you view the world? So the, the, these kind of layer each other. So if you want to maybe take a note on this. So the question was, you know, my thoughts become my experiences on a scale of zero to 10 with 10 being, I totally believe that. Where did you rate? My experiences become my thoughts on a scale of zero to 10. And then the idea is how much control do you believe you have in changing the world, your world? Do you have control or are you powerless? Do you have some control and there's other things that are out of your control? Where do you, where do you perceive things to be? And then uh, the other one is how much control do you believe you have in changing your perception about how you view the world? And then this is just self-reflection. There's no right or wrong. I just thought what I would do is start asking some questions that might start putting this in some level of a context. I have to be really careful because I want this to be your experience, yet I sense that we were struggling a little bit. So that's really why I chose to do that. Uh, So let's take a look at lesson number 17. Lesson number 17. 
Um, let's see if I can get that to pop up correct. Yes, there we go. All right, so lesson 17 is this. I see no neutral things. I see no neutral things. So uh, yesterday we said I have no neutral thoughts. Today I'm saying we see no neutral things. So this idea that I see no neutral things is another step in the direction of identifying cause and effect as cause and effect really operate in the world. So that's the first piece of this. It's another step in identifying that. You see no neutral things because you have no neutral thoughts. And that's what we stated yesterday. It's always the thought that comes first, despite the temptation to believe that it's the other way around. Let me say that again. You see no neutral things because you have no neutral thoughts. It's always the thought that comes first, despite the temptation to believe that it's the other way around. See, common belief is that there is something outside of you that is first observed, and this observation causes you to have a thought about that, ob that subject. This is not truly the case. See, this understanding that thought comes first is not the way the world works, but you must learn that it is the actual way you think. A Course in Miracles is saying that your thoughts always come before you perceive anything. If you're, so let me say this again. We say in this Course that your thoughts always come before you perceive anything. If it were not so that your thoughts come first, perception would have no cause. And perception would itself be the cause of reality. Hmm. See, in viewing perception's highly variable nature, this is hardly likely that perception would have no cause. And one of the ways to think about that is that everybody has their own perception of anything that's experienced. And I can guarantee that none of us would have exactly the same perception. You know, you've probably, uh, you've probably uh, seen that happen. Maybe you've been with you know, your husband, wife, a significant other, and you've been at a, an event and then you're telling the event back to someone, uh, you know, that wasn't there. And what your significant other husband wife said was not at all what you perceived or saw it to be. And yet you were both at the very same place at the very same time. That's perception. It's never the same. It's never the same. So in applying today's idea that I see no neutral things, say to yourself with your eyes open for today's lesson, I see no neutral things because I have no neutral thoughts. I see no neutral things because I have no neutral thoughts. I think that's this, uh, yeah, uh, because you have no, so this is our statement. I see no neutral things because I have no neutral thoughts. Then look about you as, as you, after you've said that, and then rest your glance on each thing along the way that you see. Again, no, pers no uh, judging of it, just whatever you see. So there's a light fixture here, a lamp, but I'd say, I see no neutral things because I have no neutral thoughts. And do that throughout the room. I, uh, and then resting your glance on each thing, note along the way and say, I, I do not see a neutral light because my thoughts about lights are not neutral. I do not see a neutral blank because my thoughts about blank are not neutral. That's the statement that you make to yourself after you say, I, I see no neutral things as we start the exercise. So for example, you might say, I, see, uh, I do not see a neutral wall because my thoughts about walls are not neutral. I do not see a neutral body, you know, standing where you can get the mirror because my thoughts about bodies are not neutral. Now, as usual in this exercise, it's essential to make no distinction between what you believe to be animate or inanimate, pleasant or unpleasant. Don't judge where your, where your glance rests, just wherever it stops, do the exercise. Regardless of what you may believe, you do not see anything that is really alive or really joyous. You don't, it's, you don't. You do not see things that are, let me say this again, you do not see anything that is really alive or really joyous because you are unaware as yet of any thought that is really true and therefore really happy. That's what we're working towards in this program. So now three or four specific periods of practice are recommended through the day today and no less than three really is ideal uh, for a maximum benefit. Even if you experience resistance, do at least three today. 
However, if you do experience resistance or uneasiness as you're doing it, the length of the practice period should be reduced um, to less than the minimum or uh, what's otherwise recommended. Now, no more than four either way is what they're recommending. So that's the that's kind of the that's the layout of the lesson taken right from the Course of Miracles. Now, let me just break it down a little bit more because I think this may help. So lesson 17 is a logical consequence of the previous lesson, which is lesson 16, which stated, I have no neutral thoughts, right? I have no neutral thoughts. So this is kind of the next step of that. If everything is the result of your thoughts and you have no neutral thoughts, then obviously there can be no neutral things, right? So everything is a result of our thoughts and I have no neutral thoughts. So nothing can be neutral. Once again, it's important to remember that you live in a world of perception, not one based on actual fact. A Course in Miracles points out in your world of provisional reality, thoughts always come first, despite the typical worldview that experiences are the source and cause of all thoughts. That's not true. Thoughts come first. So based on psychological and physiological research, our physical senses operate out of your prior belief system. Psych uh, physiologists tell us that the physical senses are incapable of observing the whole, and therefore there are large gaps in existence in our power of observation. So those gaps then get filled in by our mind's past beliefs. So we don't have the ability, to, remember yesterday I said there were over a million pieces of stimuli every second that come at us. It's our reticular activating system that determines what, what amount of those it lets through because it's what's important to us. The gaps then, because we can't perceive all a million little pieces of stimuli, are filled in by our past. So the mind is always coloring your present perception and therefore distorting, distorting objective reality by what it expects to observe based on past experiences. Hmm. So if it's always your thought that generates your perception, thoughts must be present and are causative since without thoughts, perception would not exist. Perception by definition always comes from the viewpoint of the perceiver. That's why none of us can have exactly the same. Perception never comes from the viewpoint of an item being observed. Hmm. So, you know, in lesson 16, we talked about there were no neutral thoughts. The note points out that all your current thoughts are filtered based on your past beliefs. This filtering process actually transforms any potential thought into a representation of a prior existing belief. So thoughts raised to the level of a belief are empowered by our mind to impact your perceived reality. And your mind's beliefs determine how uh, you will interact with the outside world. So that's, you know, it, 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 this is what we're doing. We're kind of, when I say we're peeling the onion, we're starting to, to, to get shed or at least understand why there's an importance to shed the, a lot of what we carry with us from that past because it really does filter and uh, shapes our future unless we choose to let it go. So, you know, at this time, it's not necessary at all for you to believe with 100% certainty about any of this, just as I said yesterday. You also don't have to believe that your thoughts are the precursors of your tomorrow. You don't have to believe that yet. And yet that's where this is going. So um, I'm hopeful that it maybe helped a little bit just to kind of break it down a little more from just what was in the text. Um, you know, the, the, the whole idea goes back to that question and about how your thoughts are your experiences or your experiences are your thoughts. And, um, and in starting to, to maybe acknowledge that, what difference might that make in your days, in what your life looks like, in what your inter interaction with uh, your customers and clients might be. I know for my folks who were in the uh, classic bold, the one we did for like eight years, we had a, we had a video that we showed uh, about Einstein's theory of, uh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna th think if I can remember that. He said, it was the one where there were two people on a train and the train got struck by lightning. And someone, they both had a different perception of exactly when the lightning strike hit. And, and the question is, who was right? And the answer is both were right. Because of, it's based on where they were at in, in, in the, on the train and their observations meant they were both right because it was their perception. And 
I'm going to, I'm going to find that theory from Einstein because he talked about it. It's the, uh, does anyone remember who I, I used to, I taught that thing forever and I can't remember the phrase right now, but um, both are right. So let me, let me put it in context. Of, go ahead, uh, Limerie. We, the theory of relativity, right? Where there's two people on the train and they're throwing, I always, I learned it with the, the throwing a ball. If you, if you had two people who are standing on a train, one throws a ball to another, it looks like it's traveling this distance, but somebody who's standing over there, it's traveling like and it's there. Not, it's, it's along the lines of relativity, but it's a different theory, Slightly though, different. I believe. Oh, okay. I think you're, but yeah, I'll get it, because it's it, uh, from, oh man, it's floating around in my head, but it's along those lines, and it's exactly right. So both are right, aren't they? So they observe, so the observer is what is correct in what they see, and yet what both observers see is different. Because, and this goes back to lessons 16 and 17, I believe, because our, 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 our brain fills in gaps based on our past is one piece of this. And so, you know, perception is our reality, isn't it? Because our brain fills in gaps. With our clients and customers, how does that show up? Well, you know what? The perception that every client has about maybe the real estate market right now is, is correct for them. Right. And, and the mistake a lot of times we'll make is that we will fight their perception and try to prove that they're wrong. That's perfect for them because it's how they it's everything they brought to that spot in their life. And I always think about it this way, where we start messing up, especially when working with clients and customers and we start trying to change their reality. You can't. Just like I can't change your reality. Your reality is yours. Now you can control it and you can you can choose to have it be different. And that's what this conversation is all about. Does that make sense? Or am I just way out there today? <laughs> so, all right. Any, any questions, thoughts, or comments? Thank you, Lynn Marie.